Talk Pro. Uh, I'd like to just mention that um, we're still taking um, applications for that little booklet on basketball statistics called Basketball's Winning Tools. Uh, so keep coming. I'm getting uh, some every day. And uh, I will be making a decision pretty soon about the course. Uh, with the holidays and everything and some of my personal matters, uh, I've had to, to hold off on that. Uh, today I'm really uh, pleased uh, to offer to you uh, Nick Mata's automatic, what he called automatic, uh, because uh, I think it's just a great play. I've run it a long time, uh, many, many times, and uh, not like he did. Um, but um, Mata was such a uh, great teacher. I was very fortunate. I spent a lot of time with him. You know, I, I, through Jerry Sloan, I got to watch a lot of his practices in training camp. And uh, then when he retired the first time, uh, he came to my training camps. He came to three of them uh, in a row. So we, we had a lot of uh, chance. I just used to just uh, be um, amazed at watching him teach in a practice. And it was better when I wasn't involved. Uh, after he came back uh, the second time, then I was involved with him in, on the practice floor. But uh, just sitting up there watching it uh, was such a, uh, such a joy. Uh, I wish you could have all experienced it. Um, I'll see how a guy really can teach. Uh, he was wonderful, just absolutely wonderful, and a great detail guy. I'll, I'll share a little story with you about that. He came up to one of my, I think it might have been the second uh, training camp, and after he, uh, he was there maybe one time, he was there a week, he was maybe there about three, four days. Uh, but anyway, I took him out to the airport. And we had enough time, we wanted to have a cup of coffee and kind of close things up. And uh, I had forgotten that I had wanted to ask him about a particular thing that he did uh, with a 6'3 postman. Uh, his first name was Mark. I can't remember his second uh, last name, but uh, he was a very big time scorer, uh, you know, a very good NBA player. Uh, but Mata had a way of getting him on the block uh, any time he wanted to. And then that guy could score. So I asked him about it. And he said, I'd be glad to show it to you. And we got to, I don't know how we got the paper or the pencil, but we got it. And he began to show me. It took him an hour to show me a very, it's a very simple, simple play. Not the one I'm showing you today. Uh, in fact, you know, we felt he had to get to the gate, so I went with him, uh, and um, the plane was a little late, so we had more time. He took me through every step of this simple little play that he used to get this guy, Mark, open on the block, where he was devastating. He's only about 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, big. Had a real big butt. and could really muscle his way in there. Uh, he went through every position, everything, every angle that that position needed to be, every detail of what would happen if this happened. It took him an hour, every detail. That's the way he taught. That's the way he <coughs> ran practice. Well, the play I'm going to show you of his, it's called Automatic. I believe Dick ran it his whole career. I mean, he had over a thousand wins in the NBA. Uh, he's one of the top three or four coaches in wins. Uh, and uh, so it was a great, great experience. Uh, I just wish you guys could get that kind of experience. As, as I said, I was very fortunate. Well, this particular play, uh, I, I copied from him. I, I really don't have much in my offense or my defense that I've taken from other people. 
most of it is that, uh, you know, when I was younger, I had to tr follow a lot of people because I wasn't that. Uh, I was wise enough to know that I wasn't wise enough to make up my own stuff yet. Uh, but eventually, you know, things evolved. Uh, and I did. But this play, I took from Mata. And I didn't change one iota on this play. I've seen a lot of guys, and you guys probably will after you see it. You'll want to tweak this, you want to change this, fit this. Uh, but just remember this, uh, you aren't any smarter than Dr. Dick Mata was. Uh, so be a little humble and uh, run the play exactly the way I'm going to show you, the way he showed me uh, many, many, many times. Uh, and you'll have a lot of success with it. It's called automatic because as I told you in another uh, segment, Dick didn't really call a lot of plays. He let the players kind of flow into things and they read off of where passes were made and cuts were made what the play was. They didn't need to hear it. They, all they needed was to see it and they, they knew what they, uh, they had to do. This play was no different. This play was designed in particular for a strong overplay on the wing team. But it really could be worked, used for almost any kind of defense. In China, when I was in China, they played a lot of zone, 2-1-2 two, two zone, uh, because they really couldn't play defense, and nobody there knew how to teach them how to play defense. It was just easier to play zone. So we had to play against the zone defense a lot. And uh, what we began to do was run this play against the zone. It was very effective. The players really like to do it. They, they, you know, they go to automatic anytime they they could, uh, because they did get open for good shots off of it against the zone. But it was primarily designed for uh, a man to man. So let me go to the the pad now, and uh, it's much to draw it out, but it's something to learn. It, it takes a lot a lot more than just the drawing of it to learn it. So we'll go there now. Well, here's the diagram of it, and actually, uh, it wouldn't be too hard to expand this a little bit, but this is basically what it is. It's very simple. Uh, it's very simple to look at. Uh, it's more complex than it, it appears. It takes a lot of teaching in this, a lot of understanding by the players, a lot of learning. Don't expect it to, to take place in a few days. This is, this is a play that may take years to get it really down where you uh, can really run it uh, correctly. Um, you know, for me, I don't know how many teams I went in with it, but it never was something I could just throw at them. I mean, it was something that had to grow with them, and they did and they got very, very good at it. Thanks to Dick Mata and my opportunity to watch the master teacher uh, in action on this play. And he, in turn, had a chance to watch me uh, teach it, uh, which put a little pressure on me. Uh, it, it's a two-guard front. Everything Mata did was out of a two-guard front. Uh, in this play, or, or this situation, that. High postman was up very, very much like we do overall, and that, that's why this play fit cut one, the cut series, so uh, well. Well, the, the play, it starts with this pass, but it is not usually a called play, though you can. It usually okay, uh, uh, takes place when this is a little difficult to run the play cut one, for example, that you want. So instead of slowing things down, uh, we just, the guard can just hit the high post man. We talked about, in the other two Sundays, the other four Sundays now, about how we could change things. Well, this is one of them. 
We could call it cut one, cut two, we got a couple other stuff, but they could change it to this any time that they wanted to. The pass is made. This man goes down to set a pick. This is extremely uh, detailed and has to be performed uh, with precision. And, uh, but you can do that if you listen. Uh, and because uh, what you're listening to not is not Ron Ecker, you're listening to Dick Mata when I say the things that I say. Uh, so this man sets a pick on this guy. This this is an important screening situation. The high post man. This is a very important detail. Never turns when he gets the ball. He's taught to just be flat like this in this position with strong hands on the ball because there's going to be a lot of activity around it and a little bit and people knocking them down and grabbing their hands it has to be very very strong so the, the screen is here the the wingman's duty is originally at least is to work this guy down we want that that defensive man on him to go under this screen. If he goes over that screen, he'll get over this one. If he goes under, invariably he'll have to go under that big man. That is the key that we work for. So he uh, definitely drives him down, comes back. So now his circuit is across in front of that five man with the ball. As I, I should have shown you is that when this happens, this guard goes and sits right down on that, on that lane and stays there. And he stays there. Uh, and I'll show you when they make their move, which is a good move also. The idea is to get him to go under and now open up a shot right here. And this is important, the route that this guy takes is not tight, and they'll all want to get tight. We have a drill, we run with it, and I have to remind him over and over again, don't get tight to this guy. Get a wide from him. And that's why this man has got to have the ball in his hands, and he stays facing this direction. What he has to learn to do is this. He must learn, and I'm going to step out here just a minute. He must learn to, with his sideline uh, hand, be able to throw a bounce pass uh, without looking at it. He has to learn that, and he will. It's amazing. These guys are not always good passers. But we work with them until they can make that pass with this hand. Very critical. Because you see, these guys have all of the stunts that they want there. Uh, and I won't go into all those stunts. Um, you'd have to come with me in order for me to be able to explain. But the basic stunts that you back cut, we don't use a curl. Uh, we do use the pop. Uh, and, but, it's, but it's basically back cut or come over the top. Now, as he comes over the top, he, if he sees nobody between him and that, his teammate, he passes them the ball. And the pass has got to be a pass like this. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and he shouldn't throw the ball if this man gets in between. That's why this screen is so important. And the more you stunt it, the easier it is to get this guy to go underneath. <coughs> now, if he doesn't get the ball low, or the guy doesn't make the pass, this, he just continues and goes right down the lane. And as he does that, and that's usually when a man is getting in between, and he turns with him, but in such a way this is an illegal screen, but no one calls it. I mean, good gosh, the stuff they don't call on illegal screens is you could write a book on. But this is one that is pretty subtle. 
he turns with him and his hip makes this guy go wide or he gets pecked. So he'll sneak through here but now this guy cuts down the middle and he's behind him. The only thing that will stop this guy from getting a layup is if the defensive man is putting a lot of pressure uh, on the passer. And he can't see the guy, but he'll get very good at seeing him the more you, uh, you run it. Now, if that happens, this guy just pops out to the side. Uh, if nothing happens, this guy just moves right into the, to the low post and they can play a, their game uh, with him. But what we're looking for is this. The minute that this guy goes and he can't make a play here, uh, regardless of what it is, he turns and looks at these two guys. When th they stay very patient until uh, he looks, then screen down and now you can play all the games you want over here. Great, he's in great passing position. Uh, he can drive. Uh, he can, he, you know, if they curl or back step or whatever they do to get into the basket, he's got a good place to, uh, to pass to him. Uh, and uh, the, the, it's very uh, easily, if this guy's pretty active, uh, that he can maybe make a move. This guy may step in here to try to stop this passing back here. Then he's got that move. Uh, sometimes they get over here and he's got that move. One good thing is, on this one, is if he goes over the top, he's got his kind of pivot. If this guy starts to sneak out on that, we let him keep the ball and go right down for a layup. Uh, he's actually the screener has the ball on this play. That's different. Um, don't disregard this this stuff over here. Uh, it's excellent um, because what's happening is this guy starts going down, maybe he's got a layup once. This defensive man starts to sneak. Now you really get him down in there where this guy can come out for the shot. Uh, you can play all your games, uh, all your uh, stunts and uh, it, it just has a, a tremendous amount of openings. A lot of times you can run this as your last second play if you need, uh, you know, if you need a three, I've run it uh, when all we needed is a two. Uh, we won a huge game on the road. Uh, we were down by three with about eight seconds left. And we were prepared uh, to how to set this up. Uh, we, we had a left-handed player here that played for the Houston Rockets who could really shoot. Uh, and we had a, our best scorer was right here, and he could really shoot. And he was great at shoot making left, uh, last second shots. So this guy got cut off. I really don't think the guy got in there. I, five men just did, wasn't comfortable, I guess, with passing to him, which I'd rather have him keep it. So when he turned, they came down, and this guy came out past the three point shot and they threw directly to him. He hit a three at the buzzer and went into overtime, uh, a game that we ended up uh, winning. But this is a simple play. We didn't do anything different. I mean, we didn't adjust it. We didn't change it. They knew how to run it. Uh, they, they were very, uh, very confident of what they were doing. If it didn't work, we went in monk. Uh, we always have a backup, uh, but this was this play as simple as it looks. If you teach it right, you have to be very dedicated to getting every step of it down. Uh, it's in my book. Uh, get the book, and uh, you have a lot more uh, diagrams and everything that that and discussion that shows it. Uh, but. Um, it, you know, it was a great play for Dick, it was a great play for me. But I think I was the only guy that really ran it just exactly like he did. 
um, because uh, he told me one time he was practiced and he said, you know, you, you were teaching that play perfectly. And he said, I've had so many guys that want to copy that play and then they change it. You know, they, they got to uh, try to do this. They got a man that they want to get over here and, and then it doesn't work. Uh, it worked for me because I never forgot who the play was uh, made up for. And I never forgot how he taught it and with the intensity that he showed those players out on the floor. Uh, I, I, I would never have dreamt of going against Dick Mata. Well, that's it. If you have any questions on it, uh, it may seem simple to you. Uh, but it's not when you, this is, uh, has takes some skill, this takes skill. And the five man takes skill. Uh, he's got to learn that outside hand, a back drop, a, a bounce pass into this guy if he's back cutting. This guy can back cut a lot, but you can't curl this. It's just too jammed up. Well, that's it for today. Uh, I have one other comment to make. The Chicago Cubs have an article of how they use statistics to win the World Series. I'm going to get that information to you. So uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.